All right. So today we're talking about mechanical fasteners, right? So when you think mechanical fasteners, what do you think about? Mechanical fasteners, as in like machine parts that need fasteners, or no? We used the mechanic. So last week we did an adhesive or joining methods. Today is mechanical, so something that's oh. going to hold it together. Bolt and nut. Yeah, you think screws and, and nuts and bolts and stuff, right? So. Nuts and bolts. <clears throat> so we've got lots of different options. We've got bolts, we've got studs, we've got nuts, washers. <clears throat> and so we've already we've all gone through this in other classes so far. Which class? Yes, no. No? Got a little bit, yeah. Okay, so what's this? That's a uh, thread and pitch deal sizes for what's it called? What's that? What's that called? A legend. Tap drill chart. It's called a tap drill chart. I used one of those other days. Because we have the, the screw size here. And what's this number? What does that represent? talking about a screw. What does the quarter mean? The diameter of the shaft. Yeah, the, the major diameter of the thread, right? Mm -hmm. And then this one, this next column is the threads per inch. So that's how that's how many threads there are in an inch. So so like for a quarter we've got three. We've got quarter twenty, quarter twenty eight, quarter thirty two. So that's the coarse thread, the fine thread, and the extra fine thread. So there's more, they're closer together, they're smaller. And then these Two col these sets of columns here are the tap drill charts. If you're going to make a hole for it, what size are you going to drill that hole first before you go back and, and put the threads in? And then over here, we've got the clearance fits. So if you wind a, a hole that's going to slide through, so like bolts don't actually screw into the parts, they, they go through through holes, this tells you what size those holes should be, whether it's going to be a closed fit or a, a free fit. Hey, we did this last Yep, we do this in a lot of classes. That's what we're just going to do briefly in here. So we're going to talk about more stuff that we haven't talked about before. Um, so we have different types of screws. We have bolts. We've got machine screws. All right, so bolts are big. Machine screws are smaller. With machine screws, we also have different types of heads. So we've got like pan heads and flat heads and oval heads and cheese heads and round heads. We, and we still also have hex heads if we want those. Um, we have captive screws, which are these ah. things. You can press them into sheet metal and then they're, they're stuck there. What's the benefit of doing that? You don't want to take them out. Or faster assembly? Because now you don't have to get it, and so you, if you don't want it to get out, or you don't want it dropped by accident, now it's it's really easy ways to, to keep the screw there. You don't have to worry about undoing it and having the screw fall out. It's, it's, it's gonna, when you undo it, it's going to pull back and, and stay there. Um, we have pins. We also have captive nuts and standoffs. So now instead of having to hold a nut while you throw at it through. You can actually have some good threads. Because can you get can you thread into sheet metal? Sure. Sure. With a self tapper. But is it going to hold? It's sheet metal screws not, will hold it, right? Yeah. A little it, bit. But it's not super strong. And how many threads do you want to be in in material? How? So, we go back to here. So, a quarter twenty. Right. So that means each thread. Between from the peak to the peak is 0.05 inches. <clears throat> so what's the minimum thickness I could, I could use a quarter twenty with? What do you think? 
I don't know if this is the same standard, but I know like on vehicles they say for lug nuts you should get at least a good 10 full turns. So 10 full threads in. But no, that, that sort of doesn't back out. Yeah, but I, I guess this would, this would depend on how thick the material you're trying to hold in is. Yeah, so, so what would be the minimum thickness I could use with a quarter 20? threads should be within that material. Three. Yeah, three. The rule of thumb is three threads. But that changes on how big, what, what you're working on though. Right? What? Rule of thumb, three threads. So on quarter 20, that means the smallest thing you can, you can put threads into is 0.15 thick. Because each thread is 0.05. So 05115. So that would be the, the thinnest. You could, I mean, you'd want to shoot for maybe five, but once you get over three, you're not really adding a lot of strength. What you're doing is you're adding resistance to pulling out. So if you've only got three and you uh, does half a turn, now you've lost a lot of your strength. If you've got five threads, you if it backs out a little bit, you still have the strength in. And so that's one thing to look at. And so by doing inserts, pressing inserts like this, now you get more thickness. So instead of going through this little sheet metal, now I've got some thickness. Or now, like in this case, it's the same thickness, but now I've got higher quality material there. So instead of having aluminum, I've got steel. So that, that makes it a little better too. So the strength is the part of Yeah. Thick. Well, it makes it so that I have more more threads to grab into. So that makes the connection stronger. Then we have standoffs also. Um, so that way we can have that there and then just put a nut on it, not have to hold two different things. Isn't that the worst thing we have to hold a nut and a bolt, trying to get it together. And maybe some washers in between. And you drop one thing and you have to try and find it. So if you're wanting to speed up assembly, you make it easier. And these just press in. What's another alternative to doing one of these? It's a standard thing they do. I'm looking at you guys. Yeah. You didn't need over there. No, not the nurse. I like it. Welders. Oh. Come on. What do they have welders do a lot of times? Or you weld a nut to it, right? You take a regular nut and you weld it onto it. <clears throat> so what happens with that? So now you get the same basic thing, but now it doesn't look quite as nice. Or if you're using something that's real thin like that, it's really hard. Um, and then the, the threads can deform, and then you lose any of that, any of the heat treatment and the that's done to the nuts to make them strong. When you weld it, you lose that. <clears throat> so they have special weld nuts that are have enough space around it so that you're not going to affect the threads with your weld. <coughs> um, but don't they just usually, uh, they don't do a whole lot of things. No, just some tacks, but yeah. even that, depending yeah. on the size of the nut, could be enough to, to weaken it. <laughs> and if you're, if you're welding a, a nut onto something, what do you have to do to it first? Usually you need to put a screw in it when you weld it. Do you, you do that usually? No? No, you're done on that? that? That'll make it so that the threads don't deform as much. Because sometimes even the, the threads themselves can, can change shape and make it harder. Yeah. And 
So if you do have to use one, a lot of times you put a, a screw in it so that way the thread stays good. tables instead of just putting going through the sheet metal for the, the feet or welding that to it they can actually put a weld nut which gives you kind of the same thing as that but now you've got a flange you can weld onto and then you got a lot of thread up in there you don't just have a couple so same, lots of different options like this one you can put inside the tube And with, with wood, you can do T-nuts, right? So you can do T-nuts. Now you've got, you can use a machine screw instead of a wood screw. And what's the benefit of being able to use a machine screw into wood instead of a, a wood screw? Like better quality screws. And you can use better screws. What else? Yeah, you're not going to split the wood. What else? This is how I tell quality furniture. If it uses T nuts, it's quality. If it uses wood screws, it's not. <laughs> That's my major test of quality. Especially stuff I'm going to have, I might have to take apart. It's like these desks. They all have T nuts. They have wood screws in, in one spot. Where the where the little latch thing is, that has wood screws on it. But everything else, just tea nuts. On the, on the back things, the little things that go on the back. Those had bosses that are welded on. You can't see. What well, what would the benefit of a machine screw be over a wood screw? Probably won't strip as easy. Yeah, well, it doesn't strip. Yeah. So when you put it in, wood screws, you, just, you put it in too much, it's going to strip it out. Machine screws, that doesn't happen. What else? What might you want to do with this furniture someday? Take it apart, man. Take it apart, right? So machine screws, you can take it apart, put it back together, and you're going to have the same fit, right? With a wood screw, what happens when you take the screw out? Then you have to go get a, a different size or do something to fill that, to fill that hole back in because it's not going to be able to push the material out the same way. And so with, with T-Nuts, now you have the ability to assemble and disassemble, for, disassemble stuff. something on, onto a shaft or into a hole, Flip you can use a clip on it instead of having to put another screw or something. That way all you need is a groove. It's a lock. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much like a lock. Yeah. Yeah. So that was for an internal, here's a clip for an external shaft. So now you can put it on the shaft and it's going to stick on it and your part's not going to come off the end. Two for two. I'm storing them there. <laughs> <coughs> so some other options we have are rivets, right, into rivets, we can just do rivet nuts, so now it works like a rivet where it, it squeezes the material, but you've got threads on the inside. Um, we also have, so we have the pop rivets and we also have standard solid rivets. That's the tra traditional rivets. So, how do traditional rivets work? They're like you hammer them in and push them in and stuff. Yeah, by right. pressure. So 
that's how the nail is rivets. Usually one side is flat, the other side got dome on it. How'd I do that? Crush it together. Yeah. Push this one through, start banging on the mallet or on the, with the ball peen to, to round it over, and use a setter that has that profile to, to knock it in so it makes it look good. <coughs> um, what's the benefit of rivets? It cannot be undone by yeah. a civilian. <laughs> it's kind of hard That's to do. Machine, huh? you, have, you have to cut off the end to get it off. Or drill it. Yeah, or drill it out. So basically used for stuff that is permanently just going to yeah. not touch. It's for you to want, it's for stuff you don't want people messing with. Yeah, because screws, with you can undo them, right? Yeah. They have tamper resistant screws, right? So what are some tamper resistant screw types? That, uh, yeah, so pin and torques, yeah, pin right? And torques. Or one way. One ways. How, how secure are pin and torques? Not very secure because I have a set of those at home. And you can use a flathead to undo a pin and torques. <laughs> if you get the right size flathead, you can undo a pin and torques with it. Piece of cake. So like I do it all the time. Um, and then you can go online. <clears throat> I went to Lowe's and asked for a, a set of pin and torx sockets, and the guy told me they were illegal to have. I went to Osh, they had two sets there. <laughs> Big Master Car has them. They're not illegal. So that guy did Oh, that's security. You can't do that. You can't have that. Yeah, you yes. Can. Every tool truck running around town has And so, um, but it's for things that are, you're not going to want to undo more, a lot or to kind of keep the, the honest thieves out, right? But then you've got the one way, th one ways, and are those really secure? Uh, sure. Vice grips will take care of them. Yeah. You can't get it off the screwdriver, but you got a pair of vice grips. Yeah. Piece of cake. So, with the rivet, it's a pretty secure way. They're not getting on, out of it, You're getting it off without something that's pretty heavy duty. Uh, even pop rivets, <coughs> the ones now that've got the manual that can that'll make the mushroom for you. We have pins. So, what are some uses of pins? Yeah, if you're going to adjust it a lot, you use a pin, right? <laughs> so, where are pins used? That's a real common use of them. Trailers. Um, yeah, trailers. Right? Anything adjustable. Adjust chairs. What? You use chairs. Yeah, chairs. chairs. It'd be really nice if these tables had pins in them instead of for the height adjustment. Instead of using screws, if they put pins in, it'd be a lot nicer. Then it'd actually be adjustable. What else? Some pins just go straight in. Other ones have de retractable locks. Some use cotter pins, so a pin through a pin. What's another big use? Okay. I know for like cotter pins and stuff, usually you use them on anything that you don't want to ever back out, and if it does back out, it has a stop. Yeah, so you can use the stops for things. Yeah, like a lot of wheel bearings. Well, wheel bearings. that can, pen can. Oh, well, pen like that with. Oh, well, they use that for uh, lifting. Yeah, weight proof, right? Yeah. You go to the gym. <laughs> Every all the machines have pens like this, right? A bunch of them. Made with bandy. So you got a couple of times. Different types. <laughs> you got alignment pens. You got special pens for telescoping or telescoping things. Locating pens so that when you're if you're going to make an assembly fixture for lining stuff up before you weld it, or then you can use pins to line stuff up, put, make the pen go into a hole to kind of line stuff up. <coughs> Dowel pins for rolling stuff together. <coughs> so, like in furniture. For last week, you looked at the joints. There was one of the dowels. Even uh, engines have dowel pins in them sometimes. Yeah. What about spring pins? Door hinges. So, string so, pin is like dowel pin, 
But now what can you do this? You hammer that in flush so it doesn't get in the Yeah, so with that opening it can it can contract in size. So you you can actually put it into a hole that's smaller than its diameter. And what's that? You don't know what that's called when you do that? It's called a press fit or an interference fit. <coughs> Why would you use a detent like that? Are you talking about the hand of it? What? Are you talking about the hand Yeah, why would you want something that you can go, because this, this, the ball here can go all the way inside or, or stick out like that? that would what would be your use of it? Um, not really, because now we're actually wanting to use that for because you, you put the screw in to give it enough pressure on the tip. But what would be a benefit of making it so it can go in and out? You're on the right track. You could probably use things that have these in them or something like it. No, because that was the other kind. <clears throat> but it, yeah, this could be used for that though. Take this, put it on, put it on, and it takes a little bit of pressure to get it off. So it kind of holds it so I can pull it off. Right? This one, better quality. And, oh, I've got cheap sockets that don't have detents on the inside. So it's not going to work on this one. But on this one, the detent, I have to release it. Let's let in. This one is just spring. But so, is that the, the ball positioned differently from what it is on the screen? What? Isn't it? Because it's the same basic. This one is the same basic principle as this. <coughs> yeah. Cheap sockets doesn't have detents on the inside. From China, right? What? From China. What? The socket is from China? Uh, Harbor Freight, yeah. <laughs> this is Harbor Freight socket. That's a Home Depot socket. <laughs> so, what else? What would be a, a, a use of that? You guys have probably used things that had them in it before besides sockets. That's something that you, you move it and it moves and then it locks into one position, then you move it and it locks into another position. No? Uh recording? No, no, not that way. Well it doesn't even act like or you you turn it it, it kind of clicks between positions. No. Mirrors on cars do that. Yeah, they yeah. 
But even... Are you talking about a tool? No, just things that you use. Um, you just got different positions that it wants to be in a couple different positions. Like every 30 degrees I'll click into it? Yeah. Like that. Like I made a, a thing for the, the police computer and so they could turn in and click every 5 degrees or every 10 degrees. So it, it turn in and click, and it turn in and click, and then the monitor, same thing, click, click. So it could, it could lock oh. into certain positions, like a, a but mount. still move. What? A mount? Yeah. Like for like TVs and mm -hmm. anything like that you want to adjust? Yeah. <laughs> or, um, yeah, something that you might be able to move, but then you want to be able to lock into a certain position. So that would be a use of some kind of a detent. <clears throat> Well, staples. No, I use staples, right? No, I never use them. Upholstery. So, yeah, upholstery. So, upholstery uses staples a lot. It's another use of staples. Construction. Construction. Sheeting and stuff. We're we're using staples in anything mechanical. Can't they use staples for surgery? Yeah. But those are different staples. Let's, let's look at mechanical things. So, would you ever want to use some kind of a staple in a mechanical assembly that you design? Probably not. Maybe not. Can you staple on the sheet metal? I'm sure they're out of the way now. For the most cases, probably not. What else? Can you think of anything that you can staple into? seen staples in mechanical components. in a spot or, or, or something. Oh. I've seen it a couple times. What's the benefit of using a staple? Quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Quick and cheap. <clears throat> cheap. That's, that's the name of the game sometimes. <clears throat> and then hook and loop. What's that we're commonly known as? Zip ties. What? Is it a zip tie? What's hook and loop? No. You probably used it a lot though. Some that are just kind of little, 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 just little hooks that they capture the, the loops and the and the other side. So there's variants in the in the hook. 
still got some, that it's where the, they're more like that one. It's like balls on the end. So now it, instead of being fabric on one side and plastic on the other, now it's plastic on both sides and the, they're kind of locking together By the ball. with those balls. Yeah, because they kind of they fit in between each other. And when you press them down, they kind of go in. As you're pushing it, they can move. Once you got them all put together, they can't move anymore. So you you can undo it from the end. But if you try and undo it from the middle, you're not going to be able to do it. Then you've got the super ones like that. So now that's got double hook, and it, they really hold together. Um, I've, I've seen some that once you get them in, unless you go from the edge to pull them, if you try and grab them in the middle, there's no way you can pull them apart. <clears throat> and so that that's one way of holding things. So the things that you want to be permanent or or semi-permanent, you don't want to, to, or you just want to be able to, to put something up real quick and have it stick. That, that's not on a magnetic thing, uh, or, or be able to hold something back. So that's the reason why you might put hook and loop on something. Like, like if you want to put like uh, your GPS on your car, you have it. Yeah. So you, or um, we used it to to hold things. Um, you can just roll it up, stick it somewhere. You can even do that through your tools and just put your door on all the time. Yeah. And just put a little strip of hook and loop, a hook on your tool. Is it using a, a pegboard? So, I'm going to go back to screws, just because that, that's kind of an example. Using. So, when we're just making two parts that are going to line up, here I have a, a tight fit and a free fit for a quarter twenty. And here I have the, the holes lined up. The screw's going to fit in there, right? Put in screw one, it's lined up perfectly, it's all centered, right? We go here, now they're offset from each other. Holes are offset. Is that screw still going to fit through? Well, force it, so. There's enough clearance in there that now it fits. It still fits. So we'd want to make our tolerance so that this is the most it could be off, right? When we're setting up our tolerances. And I'll put a, a document in the, the, the six folder on the H drive about calculating tolerances. You can look at, um, it's got some, some math in it. Um, so if you, it might be something you want to save so you can get back to later. Um, like if you're going to do the capstone class, you're going to need to calculate tolerances. So you want to save that and hold on to that. Um, but so if I went from that center, to that center, that's how it should be often based on the, the sizes of this one. It's a bigger diameter to be off by eight thousandths. Now one could be off by four thousandths, and still, so that's kind of the worst case. They're both off off in different directions, but the screw fits through. It's squeezing that side there, squeezing that side there, but it still fits, right? Now I have one that's got a like a flat head. I put it in, it fits, right? If I have that same offset that I had before, is it going to work now? Why not? 
Yeah, so what 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 is the countersink doing to it? No? But it I mean will it still fit in the like here? It fit through, right? So I keep these these so pieces. It's gonna center. Yeah, it's gonna center it, right? So if I try to put it through there, it would fit through the hole, but the, when the top came down, it wouldn't fit. It'd wanna to move it over, or it'd really sit. Up there, right? So this side wouldn't touch. So would that give us full strength? No. No. And what would it, it would actually try and pull this part over, right? It would actually pull this part, try and pull it that way as I tightened it. And would it, the right side want to push it that way? What? Like when you're pushing it down. Yeah, so it, it, it'd, it'd want to, it'd actually kind of try, try and bend the thing if it was fixed somewhere else. If, if, if these parts weren't fixed, then it would just line up, right? But if these parts were fixed, we'd have some problems here. So we'd actually only be able to make it that much. So what that's called is, when you ask them it's going to center it, that's a fixed constraint on the hole. The hole is, has, is a fixed position, or the fastener is fixed within that hole. So it doesn't ma matter that we had extra size here for it to move around, it's going to line up with that. <coughs> so, and then here this one's free because it, it doesn't matter. It can, it can move around. This bottom piece could be anywhere from there to there, right? Could be there, could be there. It doesn't matter. The top piece, top piece is going to try to align it. Could I make this bottom piece a screw thread and keep the top with a countersink? So I could use, could I have a countersink on one? And a screw thread on the other one. Yeah, so not if they weren't aligned, right? And how perfectly would that would they have to be aligned for it to work? Pretty close, right? So when you're when you're thinking about designing things, if this piece is going to be threaded, you probably don't want this top piece to be countersunk unless you want that to position. So if I just had this one bolt, if that corner or if that corner was more important, than yeah, the other one. yeah, so. If I had this one where this this bottom piece is threaded, top piece I'll put a counter. I could put it on. So if I had a whole a pole pattern, so if I had like whole four holes, I could do that on one of them, right? Could I have the top one counter suck on all four? No, right? But what would happen if I had the top hole counter suck on all four of them, and they were out of position? Only one or two. Only one or two. And it'd be real hard to get the whole thing in, right? So, we want to make sure that you don't have things in a pattern that are using to connect two different things, or you don't have locked positions, top and bottom, on more than one thing. On one thing, yeah, that's fine, but even if just two things, this hole is off by five thousandths, it might not let you line it up right. Because that's you here. That's only 35,000 so it's allowing me to be off. And that's with the bottom piece being able to move. If the bottom piece couldn't move, then you're just kind of you're kind of shot. <clears throat> so that's something to really watch out for is you want to make things where they you have some movement. So instead of doing a flat head, maybe use some pan heads. Or countersink the pound head so that way you still got it flush. So now you've got a little bit of adjustment space. It makes making the part a lot easier. So when you have the free, you got to use uh, the space you want to use the free one. Yeah, so free, now you've got adjustment on both pieces. Yeah. On if it was a countersunk with, with a thread, yeah. both parts would have to be positioned really tight on the tolerance. Because if either one of them was off, it, won't fit. it wouldn't fit.
So that's something to look at when you're doing fasteners. Are they self-centering? You need to watch the tolerances and stuff. Yeah, have you guys ever had that happen? You get something and it doesn't, doesn't go together? No. Yeah. Probably because they didn't look at that in order. They didn't calculate the tolerances right. They just thought, oh, we'll just make them this and then they didn't they didn't go through the calculations. They didn't figure out what, what the worst case scenario is. Yeah. And make sure that it would still work. <laughs> so what determines the size of the hole? What make, what helps you determine that that tolerance on the size? Oh, I mean, I mean the clearance hole, the the diameter of the hole. Yeah, when we go back to the, like, the one fourth illustration you gave us. Um, which other one? Oh, that website? Yeah, that uh. That part is not on there. That's. This is the the. the the, the size you're going for, uh -huh. but the tolerance is how much bigger or smaller than that you can be, right? Okay, yeah. So what would affect your tolerance? Saying that it could be bigger or smaller than this. What would limit that? Think back to when we were talking about cutting processes and things. So if I wanted it, if that hole could be difference in size of a 32nd of an inch, what could I use to make that hole? A drill. A drill, pretty much anything, right? I could laser cut it, I could probably even plasma cut it. And it would be within a 32nd up and down. But if I wanted that hole to be within 5 thousandths of an inch in diameter, what would I probably do? Uh, EDM or uh, laser cutter or something? Yeah, maybe a laser cutter, maybe EDM. What if it's a part that I'm into a, a block of stuff? So I can't do a laser cutter or EDM. A block? Could I keep a 5,000 tolerance with a drill? No. Probably not. So what could I come back with after the drill to make it? I'm show you the answer until you tell me. It was, uh, I can't look it up. I know it. I showed it like there was. Do you want to go back and get it? Remember, I showed it to you. One rough sketch or cut out, and then a softer one after details. Uh, What is this called? Oh, you showed that a while back. Yeah, that's been a while. Cool. Oh. Just remember everything forever. The dolphin? No. The tool? The tool. What kind of tool? What's the name oh. of this tool? A tap. Do you see the threads on that? The bar? No. The bar, yeah. It makes a spread. It grabs like, oh. The honing? The honing is a way to make it even smaller than 5,000. Like, like five week class. I missed the day. What was that? It's like week three or something. Uh, I can't even think of what that um, is. I'm showing it to us too. What was that called? This is a ream. So reaming to give me a tolerance uh, based on my size. So a quarter inch, it can give me a lot finer than five thousandths of an inch. It can give me from 
eight thousandths down to, or eight ten thousandths down to two ten thousandths of an inch tolerance using a ring. So using a drill, eh, this chart of the chart says I should go to get down to about two thousandths for the drill, but it'd be real hard pressed, right? They'd have to have a really good drill that you you sharpened and you made sure it was perfect and it was straight and everything. <clears throat> um, but if you got to a bigger size, then maybe not. So this chart here kind of gives you the honing. Now you can get all the way down to 15 hundred thousandths of an inch. So really small with honing. So that, that helps you determine what size, what your size tolerance is, but also you take into account what um, what the use of it is. And we go over all this with five. So this is all part of five, but uh, the use of it would help determine what kind of fit, but then that also what process you want to use would affect the, the type of tolerance, the amount of tolerance you can have on it. And then once you know the size tolerance, you can go through and figure out what the position tolerance is going to be. So you know what the hole can be between this size and this size. Then you can figure out, okay, now where is the tolerance for where it can be positioned. So, and then that's a finished chart. So. <clears throat> so it kind of all goes together. So you have to know what, what process you're going to use to help determine what type of tolerances you can use. And then that'll go into calculating the, the position tolerance on it. Because we want to make sure that things we make or design can always go together. No, as long as it says that it met the tolerance, it should be able to fit and not. Because this part met and this part met, but when you put them together, they don't work. Right. So, any questions? <coughs> Stuff. No.